Don't you hate it when you're trying to get to your study but it's just too high off the ground? You try jumping but end up falling on your face. Yikes. Well, we've got you covered because in today's humble opinion we're going to be going places in Steridin. Steridin? Steridin? We'll, uh, we're, we're, we're gonna go with Steridin. Steridin is a self-proclaimed hybrid of the shooter and roguelite genres developed by Pixel in the Studios and published by Plugin Digital. I say self-proclaimed because there aren't many elements in it that could even remotely be considered roguelite. They have random loot drops and procedurally generated levels that don't always end in the same bosses, but are random elements really the only thing that constitute a roguelike these days? Solitaire, the roguelike. Every game is different and no cards are the same. Golf, the roguelike. Is today going to be windy? Fuck if you know. Life, the roguelite. Just kidding, we all know that today's going to be just as full of disappointments as yesterday. But hey, there's permadeath. While the game doesn't have much to do with roguelikes, it does have a lot more to do with shooting. And that is where its strengths lie. Stop lying to yourself, stare it in, be who you really are. You don't need the approval of the roguelike community, they're just going to hate you no matter what. The objective of the game is to move eternally to the right, and there are a bunch of people who don't want you to do that. So it's a lot like last election year. Honestly, when you really think of it. Everything between you and the right seems to be at least somewhat randomly generated. I think there are a few scenarios and patterns that are predetermined, but the series of them aren't. At least for the subgroups of selections for that particular level. Wow, that's tough to explain. Um, each level has a handful of particular scenarios that can play out that are linked together at random. How's that? Not much better. Okay. What's interesting about the way the scenarios are laid out is that there are strategic ways in which a scenario can be handled. Are there a bunch of lasers closing in on you? You might notice the explosive meteor headed right towards the source. If you stop shooting for two fucking seconds, it might just take it out for you. The environment, as it turns out, can be just as big of a threat to the enemies as it can for you, which is pretty damn nifty. One area where the game kind of falls short is its decision-making processes. There's clearly a system of strengths and weaknesses when it comes to weapon choice. Specific enemies will take more damage from a certain type of weapon. The problem is that one weapons and enemies are both randomized, so you'll never know which one will be more effective against what at any given time, which limits your ability to make intelligent decisions, and two, a lot of the enemies and bosses in general look the goddamn same. You could argue that the point of the game is survival and bullet avoidance, and that if you're good enough at that, weapon optimization doesn't really matter, but I would counter with, then why the fuck is it even included? Not that I don't appreciate the variety of attack styles, but in terms of damage, why doesn't each weapon deal its own specific amount of damage balanced against the nature of its attack pattern rather than leaving leaving it up to chance if the chance is ultimately pointless. Another problem, though I do appreciate the variety, is that some of the weapons are far too similar and there's always clearly a shittier weapon. The Demuxer, for example, is the universe's shittiest hypergun. It shoots projectiles out erratically around you as well as a series of bananas in the direction that you last moved your ship, but unlike the hypergun, there's no focus to your Demuxer, which means that you're not going to be able to focus fire for shit. Especially when you can't control your bananas because you have to move out of the way of bullets, which makes them move away from the enemy. Then there's the dick sword and the bigger blacker dick sword. Friends, if you're going to give me a lightsaber when there's already a laser option, don't make it a piddly little laser if you're not going to at least let me meet spinning around. Oh, it blocks bullets with the tip though. Just the tip? That's what she said. Then we've got melee weapons. The adage, never bring a knife to a fucking crossfire comes to mind and robots whose reliabilities are questionable at best, though Stasis does a pretty good job. You can normally find Steridin if you're looking hard enough on the Steam store for the price of $12.99, which was actually pretty shocking for me. I guess shocking isn't the right word, more like I looked at it, furrowed my brows and said, really, $13? That's a little pricey. I'd expect to pay something along the lines of $8, but definitely not much more. The recommendation, of course, would be to wait for it to go on sale for $6.49. It's a fun game, but unless you're really into shoot 'em ups I don't see anyone paying full price. Gameplay for Steridin earns an $8 out of 10 for its attempts to introduce new ideas into the shoot 'em up genre. Not all of them worked as well as I think they could have, but all in all the game is rewarding to play and exciting to watch yourself improve at. Especially when you slowly notice yourself getting closer and closer to beating that boss you get hung up on, avoiding more bullets and taking less damage. It's actually pretty ridiculously thrilling. The attack patterns were all telegraphed wonderfully for the most part, and there were only a few areas that I feel like could use some tweaking. One would be the vibrant background camouflaging some of the equally vibrant bullets, particularly blue. I love the designs and agree that everything is beautiful, but it's kind of important that I see the bullets, especially when they're moving quickly. Value for Steridin earns a 5 out of 10. It's fun enough to play, but it doesn't bring anything particularly new to the table. The experience is something that gets you hooked for a little bit, but then lacks the staying power to stand out as a memorable contribution to the bundle. Not only that, but we've recently seen more than a couple of 
shoot 'em ups in the bundle's past, not to mention roguelites that actually innovate and contribute to the genre. So that leaves it feeling a little less than stellar. With a composite score of 6.5, Steradin earns a B-. It's got its merits, but at the end of the day, it's nothing we really haven't seen before. Still, it's worth looking into if you enjoy the genre.